Standard Railroad of the World, the slogan of the Pennsylvania Railroad, aptly describes this magnificent enterprise. Dating from 1815, when Colonel John Stevens was granted the first American Railroad Charter, it was officially christened in April 1836 as the Pennsylvania Railroad. By the mid-20th century, the road had become the fourth largest in mileage, with over 10,600 miles in 14 states. This, our first in a series on the Pensy, will focus on operations of the company in the 1950s, with views of the Long Island, the New York and Long Branch, the New York Division, and local action at Atlantic City, Harrisburg, and Enola Yard, all as captured by Benjamin T. Young, Jr. We can witness, once again, the images of steam, electric, and diesel motive power unique to this great railroad. So come along for a look back to the glory days when G5s, H10s, K4s, L1s, M1s, E6s, I1s were in steam, augmented by diesels from seven builders, and electrics of six classes were moving the passenger trains. Along the way, we'll see the last steam on the Long Island, visit the world's largest railroad yard, feel the excitement of fast passenger trains at Elizabeth as we experience once again these days of Pennsylvania glory. After leasing the lines of the Brooklyn and Jamaica Railroad, the Long Island began building eastward from Jamaica in 1836. In 1844, it reached Greenport, where steamship connections were made to additional rail mileage to Boston. However, as parallel rail lines were built through Connecticut, the Long Island became a local carrier only. As competition increased, the fortunes of the company declined until, in the early 1890s, the Pennsylvania became its major stockholder. This led to the company's entry into New York's Penn Station. By 1904, the Long Island had begun to electrify. By 1927, it possessed an all-steel fleet of rolling stock. The Pensy influence came through heavily in the car and locomotive designs. The main passenger motive power in steam was the G510 Wheeler, with many K4 Pacifics also used. In freight service, the line relied on H9 and H10 class consolidations. In the electrified areas, Pensy designs also prevailed, as well as others, of unique design to the company. The G510 wheelers rode on 68-inch drivers, had 205 pounds of boiler pressure, weighed 118 and a half tons, and generated 41,000 pounds of tractive effort. These were the biggest and most powerful 10 wheelers ever built. The 31 engines were numbered 20 through 50. Equipped with power reverse and superheaters, they never received stokers. Pensy also used the G5s out of Chicago, Pittsburgh, and later on the Delmarva Division and on the Pennsylvania Reading Seashore Lines out of Philadelphia. Filmed in the early 1950s, we find passenger trains headed by the G5s and diesels built by Alco and Fairbanks Morse. For their electrified lines, the Long Island had a fleet of MP54 class multiple unit cars dating from as early as 1915. Note the baggage coach combine on this train.
of Fairbanks Morris Diesel handles the train of open window coaches. And then two trains of so-called ping-pong cars pass a local freight standing in the clear. Number 50, the last G5 delivered to the Long Island, handles an excursion at Long Island City. The layover at Long Island City gave passengers time to inspect the company's marine transfer operations. Eastbound, the 10-wheeler takes her train home via the old Montauk branch. The 280 was the most used wheel arrangement on the Pensy. In 1924, they had 3,335 consolidations on the roster. Dating from 1875, this design became the standard freight locomotive for the company. As time passed, no less than 10 classes were built, culminating in the H-10 class of 1915, constructed by Alco, Baldwin, and, of course, Pensy's own shops. In 1947, the Long Island had 15 H-6s and 19 H-10s on the roster. The three aces, number 111, moves a freight, followed by more views of these engines at work. Officially proclaimed as Operation Changeover, Long Island closed out its regular use of steam locomotives at Hicksville on October 8, 1955, in a special ceremony. Converging head-on were G5s 35 and 39, each trailing one coach. Following remarks about progress and the like, an Alco RS unit coupled onto each coach and honked off in opposite directions. The steamers, strangely out of place, headed back to Jamaica shops through the drizzle that appropriately signaled the funeral of Long Island steam. Happily, both engines survived, hopefully to return to live steam again in the future.
On October 16, 1955, there was one more steam trip. Sponsored, oddly enough, by the Brantford Electric Railway Association, out of Jamaica with number 35. A B1-class electric switcher rambles into the largest passenger train facility in the country, Sunnyside Yard. Located in Long Island City, it is two miles long and contains 44 miles of track with 296 turnouts. Over 100 trains per day were dispatched from here. From our vantage point above the Long Island Railroad, trains of electric and diesel power pass by and a lone H10 backs past. A GG1 brings a train of P70 class coaches out of the yard, followed by a train of Long Island ping pong cars overhead.